Yes. Over to you, Danielle. Thanks, Felicia. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Welcome back. I'm so glad to be here with you guys. Um, today, um, we have a really fun class. It is how to make a gorgeous pendant. And you could also turn this into a pair of earrings. If you would like to do that, you'll need two of these packs and we'll, we'll do that on the mat and show you all that. But um, for today's class, we're just gonna go over how to make this and then we'll do an earring version and get you guys rolling on making a ruffle pendant. All right, and so here's an up close view of a new colorway that I was playing with yesterday. And then here's the cover of the PDF showing both of the versions, the pendant and then the earrings. And the only difference between the two designs, and we'll show that is this design goes around a little further and this one stops kind of at the midpoint. And then when you get to the top, you just join the two six O's with a little strand of 11 O's. So super easy, super fun and versatile and adaptable and, and all of those great things. And so um, I'm gonna start with the beads. The original colorway that's in the handout, it features some size eight check. And the color that I chose was barley ivory. It's a really nice color. I like this. And then the amber mix, which has a bunch of different colors in it you can pull out to modify your design. And this, this too was used to make both of the, both of the samples. I just pulled different colors out of the mix. And then the tracing around, I did that with this pink soul gel metallic. There was also one that had a gold and the gold I didn't bring out in front of me here because it's a little harder to see on the mat, but this was the uh, original. And then I do have another colorway going over here that I might pull in um, at the end to show just for some interest, but I thought I might do something like this later with some silver, some chalk purple, and some metallic. So lots of little fun things we can do there. Um, and then, so for the findings, they have these at Michael's. They are these little sets of hammered like distress rings. They're really pretty and they have a really cool look to them. So if you wanna make earrings, you'll need two packs if you want your ring to match. Now, if you don't mind the ring, cause they have a gold, a copper and a silver. So if you don't mind them not matching um, either ear then you can just grab one pack. But I usually grab two. And then of course I'm gonna use the Wildfire 0.006 and the beading needle I'm gonna use is a size 12. You could probably still use a 10 as well. I just tend to go with my 12s whenever I've got 11s out on my mat. So there's my size 12 beading needle. And then um, that's all we'll need to make, to make this portion here with the exception of like some scissors, right? To cut our thread, things like that. Um, but later, if you want to make a pendant, you'll need something in the way of like some focal beads. And so what I, what I used here was some lanterns and some gold wooden beads that come from the strand wall. So those are a cool, cool option, but you're not stuck with that. Some of the other ideas that I had was, this is a cool one for the top bead, any spacer will do, and it doesn't have to be a metal spacer, but you can also like, just grab any strand that you like. Any focal will work as long as you can get both of the cords through it. And then I have another solution to share if you're struggling with the cord, because I did find that getting the cord through required a little bit of um, kind of like finessing work. So if that's a struggle in any way and you wanted to use beading wire, um, I'm hoping to get a chance to show how you could just do the same exact thing with beading wire and go through any beads you've got. All right, so let's dive into the stitching part. Go ahead and cut um, a length of thread. And I think in, you know, you can cut a different length depending. So if you're making the earring, you're gonna need a little more, but I'm starting with the ruffle. And so I'm gonna cut about 35 to 40 inches and I'm gonna leave a seven inch tail since I'm doing this one first. Um, a little bit more if you're gonna do the earrings, but you don't need that much more. Just probably add another seven to, you know, seven inches or so. And I hope my scissors somewhere right here. And so I'm going to thread my beading needle and a trick for that one I always show um, before class that I got from the beetle on team is that you can flatten the end of your wildfire and it'll make it a lot easier to get it through your needle so it just kind of goes flat like that. And as Meredith says it'll go through like butter. 
That's what she told me. And she was right. That totally works. And once you've got that thread, I just pull it down, you know, about seven to 10 inches and fold it over so that you have a comfortable working length. It's worked on one strand. So I just, just fold it over there. And I'm going to just poke that into my bead mat for a second. And then I'm going to bring my tail side around. So we're going to want to leave a seven inch tail. I'm going to grab a ring. When you get these rings, what you're going to find is that they have jump rings attached to them already. So you'll need to remove those two jump rings before you start your stitching and save them because they're really pretty. They're like a matte finished hammered um, jump ring that is really sturdy. So I've been saving mine for later use. You might not need it for today's project, but having a little, you know, baggie of jump rings nearby never hurts. So here's those. Okay, and so once again, this is the other end of my, my thread. So here's my needle end over here. I just kind of set that aside. Here's my tail end. And I'm going to leave about seven inches, just, just enough to weave in and tie a double knot onto the ring with a thread. So there's one and two. And then so just like that, you just get your double knot, tie that on there. And then we're going to start with some size eights. You'll need those. And then you'll need some size sixes at the same time. We're going to work both of those together. And you could go random for your size six color. This is my 60 pile amber mix. You could go random or you could select out a color, which is what I did on these samples. So I'll try to do that here. Um, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up one, one size eight, slide it down. When I get to about here, I'm going to stop. And I'm going to just pull my tail and put it through. And the reason I did that is it makes it easy for me to hide my knot. So that's something we I always do with brick stitch as I start like that. And so now my knot is hidden in there. And I can just keep going. So let's see what color we use. I think I'm going to go with this really pretty like root beer brown. Going to need one more size eight, and slide that down. And now take your needle and go under the component, so I went under it, and then through the loop. So under and through, and if you want, you can press down on your mat to keep everything outside the ring. And you pull tight there, you'll get something like that where the eights are gonna kind of sit on the ring component and that six is gonna go 90 degrees from them and come up through just the eight. And when you pull that tight, it should all pop into place. And don't worry if it slides around on the ring right now, that will tighten up as we go. And the rings are symmetrical enough that it doesn't matter. It doesn't really have a top or a bottom unless there's like something you like about having it in a certain way. So you can just play with that and see what you think. And so now I already have an eight. The whole, the goal is to have an eight, six, eight, six, all the way around for a total of eight size sixes. So an eight O is not needed here because I've already got one, right? So I'm just gonna pick up my six out and then my finishing eight O. And same thing, just gonna slide that down underneath the ring, push down, and then come up through the size eight seed bead. And then you'll just get the that little pop into place there. So let's do that so that we have a total of eight of the size six seed beads. And there's three. And if you're um, like me and working on the mat is, is great for demo purposes, but I tend to hold, hold the piece while I'm working for speed. So if you're like me, what I do is I come underneath the component, my needles through it, 
And now I'm just gonna pinch right here. Just pinching it in between my fingers. Pull my needle. And then come up through my eight. So I can't really see what I'm doing, but it's just holding everything steady. It's gonna work a little faster. Also, don't worry if the sixes are tilting because our next step is gonna lock them all in place. So they, they might kind of be leaning to the side a little bit as you work right now, but they won't stay like that. So there's our four, let's do that four more times. through this one. It goes pretty fast, I feel like. I think this is my last one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, here's number eight. And there it is. So that's our first round. And now we're gonna work back this way along our, um, along our stitch. So uh, you can choose your next color. And the next color you'll need is one of the, we're done with the eight O's and we just need six O now. So any color here that you like that you can go be pretty, I'm gonna go with this yellow, I think. Let's go ahead and pick up the size six bead and go through the last size six that you added full tight. And I'm going to do that over and over again until I've reached the other side. So picking up a six and going through the next one. And if there's anything that I've done here that was confusing or um, you feel like you want to see it again, I am going to start over and make an earring. So you'll get to see all these steps repeated. Looks like I've got one more of those there. Perfect. Okay. So now I need one more of my yellows. I didn't have that color in my pile. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of my mix. And there we go. Okay, so when you get to this, st this step right here, you'll have one last 6-0. And the goal is we want it to sit right here, but we don't have another bead to go into. Um, so what we're going to do is go down through the eight and loop around the component to lock it in. So just go through your eight and try not to hit the knot that's in there. Just gently feel for it and go around it. There we go. You'll know if you hit the knot because your needle will, just won't go through very gently. So just wiggle it and you'll find the you'll find a way around it. And sometimes I help the six sit so that it's like that. And then go ahead and go through your ring. And then back up through that eight. And once again, just kind of feeling for where that knot was. And you can also start your brick stitch without a knot um, if that's at all causing any issues for when you're stitching too. It makes it a little wonky in the beginning, but it's totally possible to do that. All right, and so there's that step all finished. We got our six there and we went around the component one time and came back up through the eight. And so now all we have left to do is embellishing it. Okay, and so here's my, this is my working thread, the one my needle's attached to. And this is that tail. I'm just leaving it, just leaving it there for now. Go ahead and come up through the six, continuing through there. 
And now I'm gonna grab some size 11. That'll probably do it. And then pick up three. And you can always play with this count. In the original design, I just thought three looked good, but you can make four, um, two would also maybe work. I thought three made it pop more. I just like that. So that's what I went with, but you can definitely try different stuff. You can also put other beads here, like, you know, decorative, um, you know, shaped beads. And so that's pretty much the whole thing right there. I'm gonna just finish this really quick. I'm going through each of the yellow sixes. So that's the ones I added in round two. And I'm not going through the other six. I'm just going through, just going through that one. Danielle? Yep. Uh, sidebar is very quiet. So I think um, we've got most of our regulars here. Cool. Um, I do wanna ask you a question. Um, someone wanted to know if small gemstones, the two MMs, would mm -hmm. they work or are there maybe too many passes of the thread? Um, I think they would work. Where would you like to put the gemstones? I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna see if Robin will respond. Okay, yeah, it's a good idea, Robin. I think um, just speaking from the perspective of the size of the bead, I think you could use it in place of the 8 because a two millimeter bead and an 8 seem kind of equivalent or close to or close enough that I think it would work, but yeah. Danielle, I read the PDF before the class uh -huh. and I, I couldn't understand it. And now I'm watching you do it and it seems like the easiest thing. Oh, okay. I'd love, I would love feedback. Of course, everyone, uh, let me know if the, when I write the PDFs, they seem clear to me, but you know, it's <laughs> no, like, if it's you just, do this all the time. You've done it. It's so pretty and I get it. I understand it. I think I could do it without even reading the PDF now. In, it could just be that learning is different for everybody. Some people like a visual illustration is enough and others need to see it. And sometimes, um, like, I think I learn better if I see it, if someone can demos. But then maybe that can be a great way to, um, the PDF can help you remember what you saw. Yes, we agree. It still adds a little value with me. Yeah, maybe it can be like just a memory jogger and not necessarily like that the main way to get it. But yeah, so this is the whole thing. All we have left to do now is to weave in our ends. And th there's a couple really easy ways to do that. And there, there's always to knot or not to knot. Either is fine. Um, I do two things here at the end that I think kind of close it up a little bit. So you remember when we were over here, we went down and we, we did a double layer of thread. I always kind of match that over here. And it's not something anyone else will see but you but it's just something I do and I need to turn around anyway. So and that's usually what I try to do. And so I'll come around and go through. So I'm going through the eight, hopefully. There we go. And I've got thread on both sides there. And now all I have to do is weave in. A couple of ways you can do that. You can start going through the beads and I really literally all I do is I just see where I end up exiting. I, I went ahead and started. I pushed through my six and then let it tell me where it wanted to go. So now it looks like I'm exiting from one of those 11s coming down through here. Another thing you can do here is reinforce anything that felt loose to you or that you didn't like. But when you're ready to trim, a couple of things I thought of, if you like knotting, a good place to knot is in between your two sixes because the knot will hide in the six and you won't see it. So if you feel like doing that, here's a cool place to put a hitch knot. Right now I'm exiting from this root beer colored size six. And I'm gonna go down underneath my yellow one here and pull. And I'm gonna pull up a loop and leave my loop here. And now I'm gonna come up underneath my pink little hat that we made. And then just making sure that it kind of hugs in between 
the goal on the other side is for that thread to go in between the root beer and the yellow one, which I just checked and it's there. So now I'm going to come up through my loop. And go ahead and pull that. So now it's, it's hard to see, I know, but that knot is hiding just in between these two sixes. And on the back side, just double checking that my thread did the same thing on the back. And I checked that before I pulled it and it, it hid in the same spot. So there's one knot. Go through again to my next root beer bead. Just do that one more time. So again, that's going down underneath my yellow bead. And then coming up underneath the pink hat. Turn it over, just kind of guide it. You see how it's it's here. You want to just pull. I often find if I pull toward the yellow bead, that it will go right where I want it to, which is right in between those two. Going through my loop, pull tight. And with any luck, we'll actually. Oops. Hmm. Well, I broke my thread. <laughs> I think the reason it broke is I might have hit a, either hit a sharp spot or then there's always I did something funky, which is possible. The good news is I have one knot going and I feel like that's enough. So I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to trim it right there. It's savable. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> OK, so we're going to push down there. And I don't see my tail, so. I feel like it's okay. It's got one knot, it's gonna make it. I would just do the same thing over here. Flatten it. Oops. And get another needle. And jump in if anyone has any questions about weaving in. I think you're good, Daniel. Although, Should I show it um, show it again or do we want to go back to the earrings start no um, we'll definitely do the earrings, but I, I think you should show how to finish um, how you do this in case we can't do it with the earring. Um, oh yeah, and then I was just thinking I'll show finishing the necklace first and then we'll switch to the earring. But I you did want to I did want to tell you that those of us who enjoy nodding are cheering <laughs> that the nodding saved the day when your thread broke. It did. Now I could technically argue that it caused the thread to break, <laughs> but I'm not good at that. No, it's true. I was glad I had another there, for real. And so I'm gonna go back through this one. And so, yeah, if I wanna attempt fade again, I could just do a quick knot here. Come up here through my loop. And it worked that time. I was a little worried, but there we go. <laughs> All right. And if you didn't want to knot, you can just um, just weave around. Just go ahead and go through, come up through some, go straight through some, go come up through some of the, the 11s. Every time you go through the 11s, it gets a little tighter. And so sometimes I actually just go all the way to the other side and then come out over here and just loop down and, and trim it there. That That's something else you could do, but. Definitely weaving in as a style. It's got it's it's got its own style for everybody. So okay, really quick, I just want to show, and, and apologies if I didn't show this in the beginning, but this is um, some waxed cotton cord. And I used it for finishing the necklace design. Um, and I just did a lark's knot and I put the beads on and knotted above the bead. So um, I'll show that just really quick. And this one, I can't find my end. Let me find my. Okay. And whatever length you cut, the length depends on like what length of a necklace you'd like. But whatever length you end up cutting, just bring your ends, bring your ends together. Oops. So you can find, whoop, I'm on my keyboard right here. There we go. Bring your ends together so you can find your, your midpoint. And then come underneath the component and then up through. So to pull it till you've got a little loop here, right? And then come up through your loop. That's a lark's knot. 
anybody want to see that again? I know we've done large knots before, but just if that if I lost anyone, let me know. Just jump in. I'll pause for a sec. I think you're good, Danielle. Good. Okay. And then, of course, I'm going to grab. In the, this is where you can use any bead you want. Um, I'm going to grab one of these. I have a little cup of them loose over here on the other strand. These come with two strands um, on each one. So each one of these that I showed in the beginning originally had two, and I cut one. And so there's my, my leftover. So I need these two right here. And this has a really generous um, in, you know, internal hole diameter. So I was able to easily get my cords through through about, about one millimeter or so. This is gonna be a little more challenging to get through that bead. Of course, it worked that time, I'm surprised. I did have to finesse some of them. And I noticed that this cord, it has different lengths depending, sorry, different thicknesses along its length. It has some variation. So if you're having like a really hard time getting both cords through your bead and you don't wanna switch the bead, um, try a different section of the cord, like maybe cut back or cut a little extra in the beginning so you can play with that because it does get bigger and smaller. Um, it's a natural product, it's cotton, so it definitely has a little bit going on there. Okay, so once you got your beads on there, loop around, bring it through. That was an overhand knot, I'm gonna show that again. So here they are, just, just string them on. And then just take your fingers underneath it, loop around, and then I usually cross it and kind of hold that spot where I crossed, bring my fingers out, and then bring that tail through that loop. So you get just a regular good old overhand knot. And then you pinch the spot where you want it to be. And you can use pliers for this too. If you pinch the spot where you want it to be, it'll bring your knot down. So that's the part on the main cord where you want your knot to sit. And then pull tight, not too tight, but there you go. It's kind of a fun way to end a design. And then here at the top, you could throw cord ends on here. You could knot them. You could do a, like a, what's it called, an adjustable knot. Anything you'd like to finish those ends is perfect. You could always just also, you know, make like a little bow that you tie when you wear it. Sometimes I just do that. Danielle, yeah. uh -huh. just, just before you leave this, because Kelly asked something I, I know other people have asked, you know, having trouble putting the knot where you want it. Yeah, I struggle with that too. I usually use tweezers, honestly, when I'm doing it, um, but I didn't want to put a laundry list of tools on here. But if you don't have tweezers handy, just chain those pliers. And so if you wanted to do that, let me throw another bead on there. I'll show it one more time. So you come through, pull strands through your bead, bring that down. Actually, looks really cute. And so I, I want my knot to sit right above that bead. So again, I'm going to go around my fingers and cross right there, get through my loop here, bring my tails through that loop. And then here's the belly of our knot, right? It's kind of the anatomy of our knot. There's the belly. And here's the main cord. And this is where I, I, my goal is to get my knot to go right there. So if I take my chainless pliers, go through that belly of the knot, and then pinch. And I push down on the bead a little bit, but pinch that spot where you want that knot to stay. I take the tails here and just pull. Now it's not down all the way because these are kind of big pliers. If you have like a precision um, uh, tweezer, that's even better. The thinner, the better at this point. Or just use the very tip of those pliers. When you pull this out, you can just start pulling one strand at a time, just gently. And of course I'm using my fingernail to kind of force it. And that, that's good enough. I feel like that's tight enough. Pulling them apart to make the knot tighter. And then- That was great, Danielle, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I hope that helps. I know knots are kind of a challenge for me too. I, and I'm a perfectionist, so I'll take something apart if you know if it's got a gap. I'll be like, oh no. So yeah, I totally, I totally feel you. I know that that feeling. And so that that in a nutshell is the is the pendant version. Um, I was thinking we dive into the earring, and I might switch the color. But before I did that, I wanted to just quickly mention I had mentioned beading wire before. 
because if you guys you're like me you get stuck on wanting to use a certain bead and i can't see where i put my beading wire here it is okay. so if you really like you really want to use a certain bead i'm gonna grab another one of these rings see all my jump rings <laughs> i've been saving those i'll try to just do this really quickly if you wanted to replace this with this it'll totally work and you can use any bead you want because this is going to get through your beads i'm just going to do a short version of that here and this is 49 strand i think this would still work with 19. i don't know about seven i think seven would be a little too stiff but i'm going to do the same thing i did with our waxed cord i'm just going to do it with the beading wire so coming through here until i have a loop bring my tails through my loop And so there's my lark knot. And grab some beads. These beads, of course, you know, they're plenty big, but if you had tiny ones that you really love and you wanted those to work out, you can do this. And the same thing will work. You can totally knot this wire. Through. And use my pliers again. And now you've got a really cool way to finish your design because you can take this beading wire and put clasps on it with a crimp. You can, you know, do space design up here, like, you know, one of those things where you put a bead and a crimp and a bead and a crimp to make something really cool. So there's option two if you're having trouble with that cord, because I know the cord can be real finicky. So try that too. Um, and let's make an earring. Let me grab one of my open rings floating around here somewhere. I'm hiding things from myself today. Let's open another one. Okay. And same thing again, I'm gonna just very quickly remove these jump rings and save them. You know, someday I'll be making a bracelet and I wanna do like a little chain and I'll have all these jump rings and I'll just be able to Put those up into a chain. A beautiful brushed metal finish there. Okay. So wildfire. I'm gonna cut a little more this time. I'm gonna go for more like 40 inches or so. And I missed it again. There you go. Flatten that end. I'm just going to start over. Danielle, I have a request for you this time. Sure. When you um, start and you show the first knot, uh -huh. would you mind taking it slow? Because the first bead is the hardest one. And I, I want to make sure everybody leaves knowing how to get that first bead going. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, I'll make sure to do that. And let me move that out of the way. There we go. Okay. So just really quickly, all I've done there is I threaded my needle and pulled this down to a good comfortable working length. And I'm taking the tail end of that same thread, got my ring, and bring it through until you have about seven inches or so over here. And then just tie what's called a double knot, just like, you know, a, a shoelace knot. So here's that's just one loop. And then double that. So there's my shoelace knot. And just bringing both of the strands together. And then coming up to my needle here on the working side, pick up a size eight seed bead, bring that down. I forgot to switch colors, but I figure we'll just stick with what's out on the mat so I can make sure I make it. Um, and then I'm just bringing the tail through the bead. This is optional. You don't have to do this, but I feel like it saved me a little bit of time later with weaving in because it can be kind of hard to get your tail through this bead once it's locked down like that. So bring your eight down. 
and pull apart working at tail thread. And you should get something that looks like that where your bead's sitting right on top. And the tail's on this side and then it's my working thread. So on your working side, go ahead and grab a bead, a size six bead, and then a size eight bead. and go underneath the component. So bring your needle underneath the loop and then up through the center of it. And push down. When you pull and you push down like that, what'll happen is, um, well, one of my eights kind of slid inside you. The goal is to keep the beads outside of your hoop when you go through it. So when you do that, you'll end up with, it'll be a little, be a little loose, but essentially, You've got your thread coming out of the eight. You got two beads on there. And then your thread's going underneath the component and up through the center. And you don't have to worry about if it's tight yet or not. All you gotta do is go through that size eight bead, but go through in the direction um, that is basically going through the same place where it's exiting. So we, we came out, went down, we went under, I'm gonna go back up through it. So like that. When you tighten that down, what'll happen is you'll have, you see this loop here, it's capturing, it's capturing my, my hoop. So it's gonna just lock everything down like that. And then over here, I'm just gonna straighten that out. And so it should sit really nicely there. And it's that same, that same step. We're going to repeat that a bunch of times, picking up an eight and a six, and then just coming up right underneath here. Again, I'm going under the component and then up through the center of the component. And then up through that size eight seed bead. And then just hop, it pops right on there. So let's do that again. Have another, another six and another size eight under and pull tight and you just want to do that a lot of times until you get around now for the earring going from memory i think i did either 12 or 13. the ruffle pendant had eight size six e beads and i think this one has we're gonna end up needing about 12 or 13 to connect, but I'm gonna just keep doing this until I meet my other side almost. Danielle, in the document, you did 15 repeats. Oh, did I did 15? Thank you. Okay, so let's do a little bit more than I thought there. But it goes pretty fast and I think it's valuable to see it, you know, from start to finish. Usually I do a jump ahead, but this one, it's just, it's nice to see it all come together. So there's that, we're kind of at our spot where we are for the pendant. And I found that as far as joining the two sections, and I'll show you when you get there, there's more than one way you can do this. And either way will work. So sometimes I just have to pick one, but I'll show you what I mean when I get there. So eats, woo, feed down. I'm out of the color I'm using, so let's really quick and I grab more. That's my favorite color in the mix, this one. <laughs> but I think I've already picked through this tube and taken them all. Here we go. Danielle, I'm enjoying watching your rhythm. Oops, I did it wrong. Yeah. Just the, the rhythm of your stitch is really great because it isn't taking you that long at all. 
oh no, no, this is fast. This is a great way to make a lot of um, gifts. And also for, you know, if you sell your work and you need to make a bunch in a real, you know, quick amount of time, this is the perfect project for that. I think anyway. I think I need one more. Let's count. I got that 14 here. Oh, 13. I'm going to need a few more, two more. It's really close. And actually, this is a great opportunity to show something else about Brick Stitch that might be valuable as a tool is that um, not only is it never the same between, you know, one, one time you create it, even on the same component with the same beads, you get a lot of variation. See how close those are? Those are really tight next to each other. If you want them to be a little more spread out, you can, you can move it and you can make it closer and further away. So always you can slide Brick Stitch around. But there, that's sticking with what is in the handout. And so here you have um, to go back around really quick. We'll, we'll be able to do that super fast. But here, all you have to do is just choose your next color of size six that you like. I think I'm going to go with gold. Yeah, we'll go with the gold color because there's lots of those. Well, that might be hard to see. Let me go with a darker color. Is that, nah. I'm on the fence now. Maybe we do yellow again. That's, that's going to pop more. Okay. So we'll go with the yellow. And same thing as before, I'm just gonna pick up a six, go through my next six and go all the way around. Danielle, uh -huh. Cindy would like to know, are you keeping your tension pretty loose? Um, throughout, it's kind of medium. Um, one thing that'll happen with brick stitch is you know your row one when you're stitching on the hoop it's going to get tighter, meaning this thread going around your hoop is going to get tighter once you've added row two. No idea why that is, but I think, well, I guess I kind of do is it's, it's going to pull. If I pull on this bead, it's going to tighten my threads around the component. So every layer in brick stitch that you add will tighten up the layer before it. Thank you. I'm just going to keep going here. And even this by itself, that's so pretty. You could even just stop there if you didn't want to make the ruffle. Glad I went with the yellow. I like that one. And yeah, so this one, I think I'm definitely using medium tension because if I was to pull super hard, it might make my, see, it might make it come up in a bowl shape. See how it's doing the bowl thing. So yeah, but you can, you can make it ease just by flattening it. And you can do that throughout the entire round. It's, it's gonna listen. So you can even fix it at the end when you get there. And last or second to last one. Okay, so here's my, my last yellow. I'll go a little slower for this part. I've got a tail on the way. Try to ignore that tail. If the tail's really bothering you, um, you could get rid of it now by going through your sixes. And I'll show that really quick. Sometimes I do do that. You can either put a needle on it or just there. Now it's kind of just not in the same place where I need to go. So here's my new six. And like we did before, it's gonna go down through my eight. Help it kind of sit that way. You go through the center. So it's hooped around the component here. Turn it over. Come up. So this is all the same steps that we did before. We're just doing them closer to where we were.
And now I'm going to head through the six and start making a ruffle again. Same as before, we're just going to do three. And I'm going to go a little quick so we can get to the other side and I can show that join. And then I'm going to need an ear wire as well. I had this idea we could make one of these, but have it be with all different colors. Like um, it would start with purple on the side and then kind of fade to red over here, like a chakra all the way around. I, th I saw someone on Instagram do a earring, a hoop earring like that, where it fades from, from violet to red around the ring. And we have all those colors in our seed bead wall. So that would be neat. It would take me a while and it would be like this long list of bead tubes, but. I just thought I'd share that idea in case anyone liked it too. I, it's on my list of things that I want to see. I want to make and see what it looks like. Okay, what is my tail doing? Let's get that out of the way. The only reason I didn't get rid of the tail entirely is that um, it gives me something I can use at the end if I need it. Like if I get to where I wanna reinforce something, I've got an extra strand and that, and there's more to weave into after this step than before it. So I left it, I left it for that, but you could, you know, just bring it through your sixes and half hitch knot and get rid of it now if you, if you wanted to. Bring that through. Wow, this is a pretty colorway. I did a little different than the last ones. There's something to note there, actually. So um, what I was doing there is, for some reason, those beads just didn't want to do their little ruffle, and there was extra thread hanging out there. Get those gaps out now before you get stuck um, not being able to tighten it later, because after this step, it doesn't tighten down very much. Now here, here's my last three, going through my last six, and now I need to get my ear wires going. And this one came from just one of those giant three packs that have like literally like a hundred, a hundred of them in there. And double check your ear wire, make sure it's closed really nicely. This one looks good. And if you care about if there's a front or a back that you like more, just choose. And then this part, you may need to feel this out. Um, I believe I, I threw a count in the handout, but I don't always stick with my counts. Also, I want to see if it will go through my ear wire. Your beads will probably move through it, but if they don't, check that. Yeah, mine aren't. Danielle, you used eight in the handout. Thank you. I wrote that thing last year, and so <laughs> I reviewed it before, but I always forget those things, like count numbers. So in that case, I'm going to go with four here. I do feel like six would be better looking at it. Um, the truth is it'll be different for you when you try it, but depending on how close this gap was for you. So don't be afraid if you get some uh, a different count or you feel a different count looks better. I'm going to try the eight now. There's four on one side. I put the ear wire on. Here's four more. And I'm going to go through the six. Um, there we go. And yeah, so it's, it's looping up a little bit. If you like that, let's stick with it. If you don't like it, you can take one bead on either side out and do three and go through your wire in three. Just decide what you what you think looks good. And when we tighten it down, it'll get a little tighter. And so I need to turn around and go back through and reinforce this. And so one way to do that is to go down through my eight. And we're gonna do this two times, so you'll get to see it more than once. So I went down through the eight. And then I'm going to go through the through the ring here. 
and then come back up through my eighth. And this is the one with my knot in it. So I'm just kind of wiggling it till it's a little more easy to get through. And so when you get at, back up through the eight, just make sure you go through your six again. And you wanna go, you wanna go in through it this way. So you're headed in the direction of your your ear wire connection here. So I'm gonna pull through that. And that's where I'm at right now. I went through the one of the 11s already. Let's go through the rest of those. I'm kind of wishing I did six instead of eight. But I wonder if I could slide it still. I bet I could. Okay, and now I continued through the six on the other side. So I went through all these beads. I went through the six, okay, pull, pull through that. Oop. And I would probably reinforce that another time. And this is where having a size 12 beading needle is super handy. Cause I'm gonna need to go through those 11s for a third pass, but here to turn around, same thing we did on the other side, go through your eight and come down. Go around, around the component, back up through the eight. Go through that six in the other direction and try to get through as many of those 11s as you can in one pass. I got through four and my ear wire, so I'm gonna keep going. And try to get to these next four. And now I'm just at the weaving in spot. Okay. And so that's a really secure little hold there. I could have done I could have done six and it would have been a little flatter. Another thing I could do is like pull this apart a little bit and flatten it out. So something to play with there to see how, how that spacing looks to you. You could even maybe, I don't know, I thought about adding even one more bead, it would be tight. But definitely play with that and see what you come up with because it's not, these counts are, they're arbitrary. They're just, they're not set in stone and your design will work. Um, try it and see and see what you like. If you want to change any of those, feel free to do that. But yeah, yeah, there's, a, there's an earring all ready to go. And we would just do that same thing we showed before where we would weave through and do those little half inch knots and or just weave through, changing, going through 11, some of the sixes, 11s, until you feel like it's nice and nice and tight and then trim. Danielle, you did brilliant for time. Oh my gosh, I was like, what brilliant was for time. I, get, I, I think that if you were not teaching this class, you would have made this whole set of jewelry in under 45 minutes. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you can make these so quick, especially the, I feel like the necklace is the fastest because it's like, boop, and you just got it. Yeah, and you can make a whole collection, everything will match. That's another cool thing you can do is you can have it all look together. And then if you really wanted to do something wild, you could make a bunch of these rings and link them as a bracelet. It'd be really statement, but cool. Yeah, and I thought about showing um, any of those steps that were confusing. If we, ha we have a few few minutes, or I could show the rest of January. I think introduce everyone to January. The sidebar again appreciates another great, easy to follow class. Yay! And so no no issues on that front. Um, all of us need to run out and buy yet more beads. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I do too. <laughs> I need more amber mix. I'm going to go to take that more of this. I use this one so much. I think it's my favorite. And then this barley, I just, I just went straight for the 500 gram bag. I couldn't, <laughs> I can't live without that color. All right. So let's look, let's look at January. Um, next week is another seller aware class called pro seller stacker. And there's the, the handout. And here's what the jewelry looks like. So we're going to do three bracelets. It's the same stitch, but you just change it up a little bit and you get a really dramatically different look. So same beads, same colors.
same stitch, different orientation. And you just maybe change the counts here between this one and this one. And so all of these are, are, are a variation of peyote. Same stitch here. So we'll show, I'll show how to do those. And it just gives you a way to take um, and make a stacker that looks like it all matches together, but different, gives you different texture. So that's super fun. Um, and then after that, we have one of our premium classes, which is a spiral stitch, but with a little spin to it. So if, if you guys have ever done some of the, you know, the basic spiral stitches where you, you string on six beads and you go through the last three and string one on and then three more and go through the last three in the center and you get that cool spiral. But it's always bugged me that they're kind of, they're loose, right? They move around and they're kind of floppy. And sometimes you can see your thread in between on the core beads. So if that's ever bugged you and you want to do a deep dive on how one way you could make this different is um, the locked in version. And so that's what the premium class for um, this this month is and that is on make it to some dates here actually so um january 21st at 2 p.m central so this is the two-hour workshop um and this is just one of our regular one-hour classes and here's the one that's in the handout and then i threw this up here because i think it's a two-hour class we're going to have a lot of time we'll cover this probably in the first hour and then we'll have so much extra time Here's some made with size 11. Now, these are eights. Here's one made with just 11s. And this is our hummingbird blue and our chalk uh, color. Here's our yellow and our orange. This is the same stitch. And I'll show you how to put beads in between it if you want to learn that. So that's going to be, um, again, that was Janu January 21st. That's when we're doing that one. And then, of course, next week for our, for our stacker. All right. Does anyone have any questions about the, the classes or what's coming? No, I think Cindy's looking forward to the premium class now that she can really, she saw the samples. So that's awesome. Right. Awesome. Thank you, Cindy. And I just want to give a quick shout out to Valerie to thank her for my earrings. <laughs> I think you guys have noticed my beautiful earrings. They are from Valerie, the talented Valerie. Maybe. So <laughs> thank you for those. I love them. And um, yeah, so I think that's all I've got today. Of course, as always, if you have questions about anything we've covered today or future classes, you can find me on the socials. I'm on at, at Danielle Wicks Jewelry. And if you tag John Bead and make it with Michaels, we'll see your work and we'll, we'll share it and feature it. And I love seeing everything you guys create. So happy new year and uh, I'll see you next Friday. <laughs>